In this video, we're going to talk again about alternate fingering, but this time using scales. There'll also be a few exercises and a couple of other techniques that we haven't discussed previously. But first, let's check that your banjo is tuned the same as mine to concert pitch. C G B D Top G I mentioned before that I don't even want to try to teach musical theory here. All I'm trying to show you are techniques which will help you learn to play classic style banjo. On any stringed instrument, the tone is an important quality of the sound produced. The tone is affected by a number of variables. Firstly, the note should be cleanly fretted. You should place your fingers just behind the frets and press firmly, but not too hard as this is not necessary. If the finger is too far behind the fret, the string can vibrate from side to side on the top of the fret, causing a zizzy, unclear sound to the note. If the finger rests on top of the fret, it can touch the vibrating string and give a muddy sound quality. If you place it in the correct position behind the fret, you get a clear tone. We've mentioned before that attack is important. Many classic banjo pieces are very bright, fast pieces and have a crisp ring to the notes. This is mainly the work of the right hand, but crisp, clean lifting and placing of the fingers of the left hand is important too. The note duration is very important. If it should sustain for a few beats, ensure that it does, and does not fizzle out early. Also, it should not ring on for too long. But along with these points, and most importantly, is the ability to rapidly change from note to note cleanly. And there's only one way to do this, and this is practice, practice and more practice. I was never an advocate of playing scales. Why on earth would I want to play scales? I just want to play the banjo. Scales are boring. Well, I ignored scales until I started to play trickier pieces which incorporated runs of notes. I just couldn't get my fingers there fast enough. I watched other players and noticed they were, seemed to be having the same trouble as I was. It soon became clear that the reason I was struggling on these rapid runs was that I was lifting my fingers too high up from the frets when moving between the notes. And it appeared that others were doing the same. Have a look at a few videos on this website, particularly those by Eric Stefanelli, and look how close his fingers are to the strings when moving between notes. You can hardly see daylight underneath them. OK, I've worked out what was wrong, but how on earth do I correct it? The answer was scales. I started to play scales not because they were musically useful when playing in different keys, but because they were useful finger exercises for rapid shifting of notes up and down the neck. I have attached with the video a sheet which contains five major scales. These are for fingering practice only. Let's start with C major. quite a long way up the fingerboard. I find this quite useful because quite often in classic style there are sections which involve rapid runs up and down the fingerboard. Often when you see people playing classic banjo solos and in fact practicing scales they lift the fingers very high off the strings. Fingers 
close to the frets and you'll find it much quicker. Try and keep your fingers very, very close to the frets when moving between the notes. Close enough to lift from the string, but not to buzz on the string. It takes quite some practice because it seems to be a natural tendency for most people, including myself, to lift the fingers very high off the strings when moving between notes. But once you learn to keep close to the fingerboard, you'll find that your pieces play so much smoother and so much quicker. Play the scales over and over until you can commit them to memory and play them without looking at the music. Then move on to this next exercise, which will also help. And if you can memorize this one and play it over and over several times a day, this is probably one of the best exercises I ever came across for playing classic style and getting rapidity in finger movement across the notes. Another scale practice which has helped me play rapid chromatic runs of notes is one which I put together myself. Chromatic scales are nothing new, but usually this chromatic scale starts with the first finger. I discovered that if I use my second finger, say at the fifth fret on the third string, practice this exercise moving up and down the fingerboard. Again, trying to keep your fingers as close to the strings as possible while moving. There are other scale exercises to practice on the attached downloadable sheets. When playing four note chords, such as the 4002, the thumb of the right hand plays the bass string and then moves across to the third string and then the first finger and then the second finger but this thumb glides across and this is known as a thumb glide and it's used a lot when four note chords are being played. If you want to learn more about the musical theory relating to classic style banjo and do more exercises and get tips and hints, I strongly recommend that you buy the Fingerstyle Banjo and How to Play It, which has been produced by the Clifford Essex Music Company. It brings up to date banjo tutors incorporating tablature and there is even a CD attached of the exercises. The Clifford Essex Company have also produced the original Emile Grimshaw How to Excel on the Banjo in three parts. Both this and the fingerstyle banjo and how to play it are superb tutors and I can strongly recommend them to anybody.